manifold blessings of the Lord. Salvation. We are purged by the blood of Jesus. We are bought with a price. We are created in his image. And we are, 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 have a future in life eternal. Amen. Praise the Lord. Such a wonderful uh, opportunity to be here. I'm so glad, amen, to, to be a part of this English Missionary Conference. Uh, I pray for this missionary conference that the Lord continues um, growing this vision that Pastor Samuel David Mejia has. And uh, I want to also uh, greet Pastor Samuel David. So glad that, uh, to see him once again. It's been a while since I've seen him. Amen. Uh, we had made a trip to India together, and then after that I had to go by myself, and I said, oh, I feel lonely on this trip, but uh, uh, good to see you, Pastor Carlos Guerra, a good friend of mine for, for many years now, amen, and all of you wonderful people from, from uh, even from afar off, amen, from other countries, and locally, may God bless you, amen. Receive greetings from Tampico, Mexico, amen. Praise the Lord. Well, as the Lord would have us to preach today, we would like to go to the book of St. Luke, amen, chapter 21, chapter 21. We're going to start reading verse 29, we're going to start reading in verse 29. I'm going to read in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And he spake to them a parable. Behold the fig tree and all the trees. When they now shoot forth, ye see and know of your own selves that summer is now nigh at hand. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. So likewise ye, verse 31, so likewise ye, when ye see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Let us pray. Father, we need you today to give us of that anointing, and we have already prayed, but once again we come before you knowing that we need the anointing of the Holy Ghost. We need the anointing of your Holy Spirit that would touch us, our lips, our minds, that we may be able to bring forth the message from heaven today. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. I would like to minister under the topic, this is an emergency. <laughs> this is an emergency. The coming of the Lord is at hand. We are in the final lap to the coming of the Lord. Sometimes I think it would be nice to have lived during the time of Moses and to see the miracles that Moses did or live during the time of Jesus Christ, watch him as he raised up the dead and healed the lame and made them walk again or the blind to recover would have been nice to see that would have been nice to see the red sea part as moses stretched out his rod but you know even all of them people who saw the miracles that god did not all of them made it to the promised land and we live today in a very special time we live in the end of times we live in the last days it's becoming more and more uh, understandable in the scriptures that Jesus Christ is coming for us. I believe that the scripture as it says in Revelations that they that are filthy that they become more filthy and though that are, they, they that are righteous become more righteous. It means that there is a separation God is doing and I believe that we as Christians, we that believe that Jesus Christ is coming back for his church and that are keeping the faith I believe that God is bringing us closer to Him every day. I believe that God is bringing us to a closer walk with Him and giving us even special revelation that probably before 
we did not see happen. But today we can see God working many miracles even amongst the worldwide missionary movement. I have seen with my eyes many miracles this past year. I have seen God work in very special ways trying to prepare us for His coming. Constantly showing His loving kindness towards His church. Preparing the church for His coming. I believe that Jesus Christ is coming back very soon. This is a missionary conference. And we are, we have a missionary vision. And we are looking, amen, uh, the, the, the idea of being a missionary is that we reach out for souls, that we preach the gospel, that we, we hurry up. We act quickly and that we would not allow procrastination to take control of our lives. Because you see, we as human beings, we are very given to self-complacency and relaxation. Look, if you don't believe me, look at all of the tourist companies that are around. Look at all the companies of tourism. They will offer you, amen, beautiful cruises and there's new beaches that are coming up every year, places that nobody has ever stepped foot on, and they discover a new island with this white sand beach, and they invite you to come and experience their, the, the, the leisure of the beach and the leisure of, of a, new, uh, a new tourist attraction. Because people are involved in leisure, and they're involved in comfort, and they're involved in this self-complacency but I believe that we as children of God, the Bible says that we must enter into heaven by much affliction. And I believe the affliction that is coming upon the world even as now is causing the church to awaken, to arise. I mean, to the urgent call of the last, the last, uh, uh, the last call of the Lord to, to put in his uh, os, la os. How do you say that word? I forgot it. Amen. And so there is going to be a great harvest. Amen. At the last minute, people are going to come to the, to the feet of Jesus Christ, running with their heavy loads and burdens of sin. And God is going to bring this revival and spark an interest and spark fire in our hearts so that we can reach out to the community and those that are around us. Amen. Praise the Lord. When there's an emergency... It is necessary that we understand that there is little time to react to an emergency. In the United States, they have the 911. In Mexico, we have 066. These are the numbers that we dial so that we won't have to remember that long number. You know, if we had a, a number, it used to be call the police and it was, uh, you know, Two seven two five six seven four seven eight nine, and and people they realized that that we that there was no way to react as quickly to that emergency by dialing the long number because many would forget in a moment of stress in a moment of anxiety, so they discovered that if we would just connect a three digit number nine one one that there would be a quicker response to the emergency. Amen. And so they developed a system knowing that someone who has, is having a heart attack, someone who has had an accident in a vehicle, that they just have a small amount of time sometimes to react to that emergency call. Because how long does it take for a person to die? A person in five minutes after not having oxygen to his brain is dead but if there would be a quicker response then there would be more lives that would be saved under those stressful circumstances I believe that we are living in stressful circumstances we are living the signs are telling us of the times the Bible gave us signs uh, amen in verse 25 the Bible begins to speak about the signs and he says there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations uh, with perplexity the sea and the waves roaring men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken 
the powers of heaven shall be shaken. That means that the demonic forces will feel the pressure of the coming of the Lord. And they will begin to react, to overly react, to attack the church, to attack. Look at what's happening in, in Nigeria. Churches are being in, infiltrated by, by, by different people of, the, uh, of those who kill a Christian. They're going in and killing Christians. And then there's other places around the world that the Christians are being hated day in and day out. And so the enemy is very upset. The enemy is very angry with Christians. But the Bible says that he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then that wicked one shall be revealed. Jesus Christ uh, will come for his church uh, before, amen, the tribulation. Praise the Lord. Some people are saying now that there is no such thing as a rapture. That there is no such thing as a catching away. Amen. But the Bible tells us, amen, and we strongly believe that there is a rapture. We strongly believe that there is a catching away. Praise the Lord. The Bible says in John chapter 14 and verse 3. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto what? Myself. This is Jesus Christ speaking of the first resurrection. This is Jesus Christ speaking of his coming back for his church. This is speaking of the catching away or what we would call the rapture of the church. This seems like something almost impossible or almost a dream, but it will happen. The Bible says, amen, in 2 Thessalonians, and we've read it many a times, uh, amen, that the dead in Christ shall rise first and we that are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And then there shall we be forever with Him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You see, there's a difference. Amen. One is that He's coming back for His saints. Then we see in Jude chapter 14, we see a coming back. Or not chapter 14, but verse 14. Jude Verse 14, and Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. So now we have the coming with the saints. Before we had the coming, amen, for the saints. And then next, we have the coming with the saints. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm waiting on my white horse. I know the Lord's going to give me a white horse to ride. Praise the Lord. And I believe I'm going to be part of, a, of, of the thousands of saints that come back to earth after the tribulation. Praise the Lord. Do we not believe that, saints? How many of you are ready for His coming? God is preparing the church for His return for the church. God is preparing the church for Him to come back and raise us up out of this earth. To rapture us up. To take us up. Amen. To meet Him in the air. Praise God. As we see this, amen, the Bible says, And He spake to them about this fig tree. Look at what it says. Behold the fig tree and all the trees. When they, when they now shoot forth, you see and know of your own selves that summer is nigh at hand. There are signs that are telling us when we are getting closer to the coming of the Lord. So what does the church do? What is the church supposed to do? Get ready. How do we get ready? I believe there's an urgent call by God, amen, to prepare ourselves for His coming. And one of those is the love for the mission work. I believe at the last minute there will be God. God will bring up many missionaries across the whole world. 
and send them forth in a last harvest with a burden, with a calling, amen, with a, with a, a burden to reach out with love, with, with a cry, with a heart cry to reach out to those that are lost and say, prepare ye the way. The Lord is coming. Prepare. Make your path straight. Jesus Christ is on his way. Jesus Christ is coming. Jesus Christ is coming. Are you ready? Jesus Christ is coming. Are you ready? Ready. Jesus Christ is coming. Are you ready? Praise the Lord. Can you imagine the emergency room? The emergency room is, is buzzing with uh, a people around a person that's having a heart attack. Doctors are there. Pass me this medicine. Pass me this syringe. Let's do this. But let's take another look at another emergency room where people are non-complacent. People are just are complacent. People are just having a, 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 a just a good time. Maybe the nurses are over there in another room and they're drinking their Dr. Peppers and eating their hamburgers. The doctor's having a, a, a little chat with, with another doctor about the last golf game that he had. And the ambulance is on his way with the person that's having a heart attack. At this very moment, he rushes in. They bring the patient into the room, into the emergency room. They dial, they, they come over the intercom and say, everyone to the floor, it's a, it's a, code, ru, uh, a code blue or a clo- code red. I forget the, the code. It's a code blue. It's a code blue. It's an emergency. Everyone to the table. And the doctor says, uh, I'll keep talking to my friend about the last golf cart. I got a few more things I want to talk about. The nurse says, I've got to finish my few last bites of my hamburger because, you know, I've got to have my time. I've got to have my time. Can you imagine what would happen as that patient lays on that emergency room bed and no one comes to assist him because everyone is busy doing what they want to do. Can you imagine that this would happen to the church of Jesus Christ? Where we would be actually so busy doing our own thing. So busy worry about what we're going to do tomorrow. What we're going to enjoy tomorrow. What we're going to, where we're going to go have fun And at the same time, there are lost souls that are dying daily, daily, and daily. Thousands of people are dying around the world. There is a necessity for the church to wake up to that calling. Wake up and and react to the call. I I can hear God speaking in my spirit over the intercom, intercom. Everyone, code blue, code blue, it is emergency. Everyone to the mission field. Everyone to the mission field. Everyone to the mission field. We've got necessity. We have different things that are happening. Oh, God, help us, Lord. Oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus. Raise your hands and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, Jesus, let's all call up on the Lord for a moment. Let's ask him, say, God, please help us to feel the urgency, the need. Oh, Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If we can see that there's an appointment, we have, a, we have an appointment, the day is set, the time is set, the Lord is coming. Salvation for the world is at hand. We need to watch and pray to be counted worthy to escape. Luke chapter 21, amen, and verse 36 says, Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all things, these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. This is doctrine, but it is also a call for us to prepare ourselves that we be ready, that we be worthy. When Jesus Christ comes back to the earth, will he find faith? Will he find faith? Amen. Watch, pray, 
to be, a, to be counted worthy to escape. Also, 1 Thessalonians 1.10, what does it say? Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. It is not the will of God for us to go through the wrath. It is not God's will for us to go through a, a, the wrath of God for the whole world. He wants us to have salvation. 1 Thessalonians 5.9 says, God did not appoint us to wrath, but to what? Salvation. We are not appointed unto wrath, but unto salvation. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What does Titus say? Titus 2.13 also says, Looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of Jesus Christ. What are we looking for? What are we waiting for? What are we looking for? What is our expectation? What does our hope consist of? It consists of waiting for the glorious appearing of Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I look at uh, of some examples in the Word of God of people that had the idea of what it was to react with haste. People that had the idea of what it was to act quickly. Whenever Abraham was there in memory in the desert, I, I remember the story, Genesis chapter 18, and the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of memory. What did he do? He said, I want, will you please tarry with me some? Let me fix you something to eat. And verse 6 says, And Abraham hastened into the tent unto Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of fine meal needed and make cakes upon the earth. On the hearth. And verse 7 says, And Abraham ran unto the, unto the cattle and fetched a calf tender and good and gave it unto a young man and he Hasted to dress it. He had a sense of urgency. He was able to react quickly, amen, to what to the presence of the Lord. He was able to feel that urgency. He was able to understand that urgency. He was able to perceive the urgency. What do I need to do in front of an urgent situation? How am I supposed to react under a stressful, urgent situation? He knew the Lord was there. He knew the Lord was coming to his house. He knew the Lord was there at his tent. He was visiting him. How am I supposed to react? Amen. Can you imagine that day? I don't know, but I can imagine the visitation of the Lord. We've had people visit our homes. We've had, we've had preachers come to our house. And it, what a joy it is to have preachers come and visit us, especially those from from another country, from foreign places. When they arrive, amen, as soon as they arrive, the first thing we do is we become bustling about the business, hurrying quickly, trying to prepare the meal, getting the food on the table. My wife is in the kitchen. She's trying to hurry up and fix the meal. My sons are there carrying the suitcases. They're so excited because we have someone who's coming to visit us. We have people and brothers and sisters from the church that they're calling us, Pastor, what can I do? Where can I go? What do I need? And I'm telling them, we need to get ready for the service tonight. Get the chairs out. We need to do this. We need to do that. And there's a movement. Amen. There, there is, there's a sense of, of urgency to do something for the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Can you imagine that the Lord Jesus Christ is about to come? He is, he is at the door. He is soon to come. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. In Mexico, in Mexico, we are having a, a move of God. We feel like God is actually doing wonderful things in Mexico. We have struggled. We have had small churches. The Worldwide Missionary Movement at this time has not that many churches. I don't know the exact total. But very few churches have a membership of over 30 or 40 or 50. Not very many. But there's been a crying out to the Lord. 
by many pastors in Mexico. There is a spiritual conflict in the country. There are, there, that's why many, there are many murders and many things that are happening, many threats to people's safety because there is a parallel spiritual warfare that's going on. Amen. And as we begin to cry out to the Lord, as we begin to plead with Him, people are, are calling out to the Lord in desperation. Families are, are, are being affected. I, I don't know too many families who have not been affected by the violence in Mexico. I can talk to one family, and either their cousin or their aunt or their uncle or somebody has been affected. Go to another family, somehow there is a personal situation. Every family has been affected by this virus. My own son has seen dead bodies literally on the ground. Murdered. We come out of church one time and we go and, and there's a man that's dead right there at the store. Dying in a pool of blood. We go around the corner, we go to another place. Another, a couple of days later, somebody was killed. Somebody was held hostage. Somebody was kidnapped. The next day they appear dead. And people begin to cry. People begin to feel desperation in their soul. What is happening in, in our country? Our peaceful country that we had, what is happening to it? So people begin to look for answers and look for answers. And the whole time, God knows exactly how to get the attention of the people. And I believe that God is trying to get our attention. If there is something that I wished I could portray to you today, is the need for us to feel the urgency of the coming of the Lord. What if, if we look at all the signs that are happening around us right now, if we look at what is happening in, in, in Syria, what is happening in, in, in Iran, what is happening in Israel, what is happening even in Costa Rica just the, not too long ago, there was an earthquake. Pastor Carlos Guerrero was telling me this morning at the, at the breakfast table how that God laid it upon his heart to fast and pray. He felt like there was a need to fast and pray two weeks before the earthquake. He felt like God, he said that God was going to bring judgment to Costa Rica. And he began to fast and pray with the church. Two weeks later, the earthquake. But by God's grace, out of all the houses, over a hundred and some houses fell. One person only died. By the grace of God, because there was a sense of urgency. We are here in a very delicate situation. Time is here. How are we reacting? Are we running and doing what God wants us to do? Or are we complacent where we're at? I'm also reminded. I'm also reminded of some of the other examples that we have. Amen. And one of those things that I like to look at is when Jesus Christ was with, with his disciples. And after he spoke to that Samaritan woman, all them people in John chapter 4, all them people came to look for Jesus because of the testimony of the lady that had told all the people, come and see a man that has told me everything about my life. Come and see a man that has told me everything. Praise the Lord. And they come over that hill, I don't know, possibly running to see the Messiah, the King, the one they were waiting for for many years. Come and see this man. He must be a prophet. He must be somebody special. It must be the Messiah. It must be the King. Come and see him. And people came running towards him. I'm sure that Jesus Christ, when he said those words, and he told his disciples, did you not say it's four months until harvest did you not say it's four months until harvest no he said look up look up and see amen that the harvests are white that the fields are white don't wait four months 
It is now. The urgency of the call is today. Look up and see the fields are white. It is harvest time. Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm sure that if we look at that situation, amen, Jesus Christ is saying to the disciples, you need to use your eyes. You need to be aware. You need to awaken to the necessity that there is in the world today. Look at the need that we have today. Let us be able to perceive with our eyes that Jesus Christ is soon to come. How many people do we go by and look over that possibly need Jesus Christ? We may walk by that person, and that person is in his spirit. If I just had someone to tell me about the gospel of Jesus Christ. If someone would take time to speak to me about the Lord and his coming, of the salvation of Jesus Christ. And there we pass by, but our eyes do not perceive the need that is there at the moment. I know because God, personally, by personal experience, I know that that has been a situation even with me. And I have prayed, God, take it away from me. Sometimes we are not perceptive of the need of the person. But at times, God has spoken to me and said, turn around and go back and speak to that person. I have walked by people at some point in time, and the Lord will say, you see the person, speak to that person about me. Speak to that person. I, they are waiting for someone to take the gospel to them. And I will go back and I will say, I will begin a conversation. And I realize that that person was just waiting for someone to speak to them about the Lord. Also, we are in a battle. We are in a spiritual warfare. So our complacency can allow for the devil to take ground. This is my last point. Our complacency and our, and our comfort zone that we're in can allow for the enemy to take too much ground. While we're sleeping, the devil is working. While we're sleeping, the devil is planting discord. While we're sleeping, the enemy is out to destroy. While we sleep, the enemy is working 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. He's working overtime. I'm not a fighter, necessarily. But when I was young, the Lord had to deal with my heart about fighting. <laughs> I was not a very good fighter. But somehow, I got myself into some tight situations. And I got myself into some tight pinches. And I had to find a way to get out of them. Sometimes the only way to get out of them was to fight. And a lot of times, especially at first, I got beat up many times. And I found out why. Because I didn't want to fight, I let them hit me first. And then after they hit me, then I tried to hit back, but it was too late. <laughs> Thank God he saved me from that. <laughs> but I began to understand that in order for me to win a, ba a battle or to win a fight, that I had to hit first. <laughs> I had to be the first one to give the hit. And Jesus, or David one time, you remember when he fought against Goliath? Do you remember that? He said, the Bible says, he ran to meet Goliath at the battle line. So you see, there's a battle line that's drawn. And the, and the devil is trying to get to that line because that's the line that is drawn to, to restrain the, the advancement of the other army. And people will rush to that battle line. Usually the one who makes it to the battle line first usually wins.
it's a psychological uh, warfare. That's why they charge. It's called the battle charge. When they cry, run, let's go forward. Some are ready to charge, but others are not. So the army that is not so willing to charge, we're going to wait until the other army charges. Then we're going to charge. We'll never win like that. We're never going to win. But David, when he faced Goliath, he had the stone in his sling. And he didn't wait for Goliath to come to him. He ran to Goliath. He beat him to the battle line. Because there was a sense of urgency. He knew what the necessity was. He knew that if he didn't beat that Goliath that day, they would lose the battle and become slaves to the Philistines. How do we react to the battle that we have? How quickly are we reacting to the emergency that we have today? We cannot wait for the enemy to meet us. The Bible says, Jesus Christ said, I have built my church upon this rock. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4 that our weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through the pulling down of strongholds, hallelujah, where the enemy has placed his defense, uh, where the enemy has set up his defensive self. Uh, we can go against him. We can attack the refuge. We can attack a man that place and destroy it we can knock down the gates of hell we can destroy every force of the enemy but we must attack amen we must feel emerge an emergency situation we must feel the urgency we must feel the need to fast and to pray and to seek god oh praise the lord would you stand to your feet and everyone close your eyes and just pray for a moment and ask God to look at our hearts within. Oh, yes, Lord. Just pray for a moment, Father. How is my attitude towards your coming? Do I feel the urgency at hand? Some say four more months, but I say look up. Look up right now and see that the harvest is white. The fields are white. It's harvest time. Oh, yes, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. This morning, if you feel like that you are self-complacent, amen, and that you have just become at ease in your life, in your spiritual life, that you possibly haven't grown in knowledge and grace of the Lord in the last few months, uh, that you haven't felt the need to pray and to intercede for the lost souls. That you haven't felt a need to get in there and cry and weep and feel a burden for the lost. If you haven't felt that urgency, we need to cry to the Lord. We need to cry to the Lord that God would send forth missionaries into the field. The Bible says, cry unto the Lord that he may send workers and laborers into the field. Let us pray that the Lord send laborers into to the field, oh Lord. There's a great need. The harvest is white, but there are few laborers. The laborers are few. There's a demand for laborers, oh Lord. Help us, God. Help us, God, to feel the urgency. Amen, oh Lord. Hallelujah. Let's, let's say today that today we're in the emergency room. Church, we're in the emergency room. We're sitting in an emergency room. There are souls that are dying. But around us, we have the tools to help those people come back to life, to revive them. It's called fasting. It's called prayer. It's called interceding. How are we going to react to the call? Code blue this morning. Code blue. How are we going to react to that call? How many of you want to... Lift up a, a calling unto the Lord. How many of you want to 
lift up your voice to the Lord today. How many of you feel that urgency? Then let us make this lift up our voices today and call upon the Lord for the souls. Would you join me in lifting up our voices? Would you please join me to lift up our voices for the lost today? And for the Lord to send missionaries into the field, will you help me pray and call upon the Lord? Let's lift up our voices. Let's call upon God. Let's ask God to break the chains of darkness. Let's attack the enemy. Amen. Let's attack the enemy before he attacks us. Let us attack the enemy before he can get situated. Let us pound the gates of hell with the word of God. Amen. Come on, let's lift up our voice and say, God, please, uh, Jesus, uh, Lord, send laborers into the field. Uh, dear Lord, have mercy, God. Have mercy today upon the lost souls. In the name of Jesus. Uh, in the name of Jesus. 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 In the name of Jesus, oh Lord. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Jesus, touch the lives and souls of those who are lost, that they may come to you. Those that are in foreign countries around the world right now that are lost and dying, that are desirous to hear the message of salvation, that you would help them today to somehow tune into the radio station, the Internet, and find a message of salvation and hope for their lives. That your spirit would go forth and touch their hearts. And they would break the yokes of sin and bondage upon their lives. That you would break the strongholds that the devil has upon their hearts and their minds and their souls. Deliver them, Lord, from the hands of the enemy. Deliver them from the hands of the enemy. Oh, Lord, surely today your spirit could go forth today and touch those that are in need right now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus come on saints let us call upon God lift up your voice one more time lift up your voice be heard your, your prayer be heard in heaven let us feel the urgent need let us feel that this is an emergency today it is an emergency yes Jesus yes Lord yes Lord yes Jesus Praise God. Praise God. Pastor Samuel. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 